Hello, it's Stuart here from The Wall Patch. Welcome back, good to see you all again. Yes, don't adjust your sets, we're just keeping up with the times and we're now available in dark mode. Let's go put it up in the conservatory. <laughs> good to see you all again. And we're back in the potting shed. New season. I like to say this is season two. Do you know, I was getting ready to do a, a, a vlog and I thought, oh, it's getting dark now, isn't it? Autumn, winter, fall is here. What better way to do a vlog than in the evenings, in the potting shed, all comfy cosy. Um, so that's what we're going to do for the rest, um, well, for, for season two. It's a good excuse to wear our knits. Uh, I can get my knits on because sometimes it's too hot by the fire, isn't it? Um, and still give you all the, the shop news and all the makes and stuff that we do in our little half hour vlog episode. So it's going to be very cosy, I'm sure. I hope it feels like that when you watch it um, and every time uh, I do an episode I'll have a different knit on and this is what I'm sporting at the moment this I uh, uh, do a quick twirl This is the Harry Styles cardigan knitted by Colin. Uh, it's in different colours to what Harry Styles had. Uh, Colin wanted to do something a bit more <laughs> stylish, um, but it is ex the exact pattern. And we talked about this in uh, briefly at the end of last vlog, uh, a, a little teaser. Um, so I don't know whether you've seen it or whether you've since gone on to have a look and Google the Harry Styles cardigan. But it all happened, uh, it was, uh, early summer Harry Styles appeared on the one show on BBC and he was wearing the cardigan uh, he had worn it I think I think it was a couple of years before um, at a gig but it was the one show appearance that boom just sent everyone off wanting to do their own Harry Styles cardigan now if you YouTube it Harry Styles cardigan in the search you will find loads and loads of people making their own versions and at this point, we're talking sort of July, August time, they were trying to copy it from the pictures. Um, but the designer in London, J.W. Anderson, was so overwhelmed with people loving the cardigan that they then released the pattern and they released it for free too. I'll put the link in the description below so you can download your own version. But I thought, um, let's make our own version and then let's also try and do a kit together. So um, so Colin's already beat me because uh, he's just a super knitter. Um, but I have started and it's what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. And it's a great fun knit. I mean, I don't think I'll exactly wear it every day, but you never know if you like want a nice slob cardigan at home in front of the telly on a Sunday afternoon, then this is it. But it's made up of panels. So there's not much sewing up because sometimes you can make these cardigans from lots and lots of squares. But this is done from a square, change colour, another square, change colour, another square. And they're using simple knitting techniques, moss stitch, double moss stitch, garter stitch, and then a, a fun bit of colour work um, with a, like a hands tooth. And that's what you do. You just do loads and loads and loads. Um, and I've, I've done about six or seven of them now. I think I've done the back and I'm now on the front, which um, you can see from Colin's version here. If I stand up again. You can see the panel. So there, one, two, three, and then there's the fourth. And the sleeves is exactly the same, one, two, three, four, and then they're just rolled round. Um, and then you've got this fab, like Ming the Merciless collar. <laughs> but it is so great. Um, Colin did his there, 
in um, using the drops and his yarn. Um, now the yarn used by J.W. Anson for Harry Styles was bright, bold colours. Blue, red, yellow, green. Um, and they used different yarns doubled up or even tripled up. But um, the pattern has simplified it by saying use a super chunky yarn. So I've managed to get, uh, for, for fun, uh, to make these kits. I, the closest brand I could find was King Cole, and it's a good old acrylic, because um, you want to keep it cheap, because there are most, I think you need two or three balls to do each cardigan. So it's about, ooh, worked out with cheap acrylic. Um, at 50 quid to do your own. So I've found um, King Cole Big Value Chunky, um, Super Chunky, sorry, uh, that had a very good color range. The only color it didn't really have is green, um, which is this one I've got here. So it's like a, a sea green, um, rather than the bright sort of grass green. So you can see there, that was my green. Um, but other than that, it had everything else. It had the yellow, it had the red, it had the the, um, the orange, and it's been fun to do. It's really quick, obviously, because it's it's super chunky. Um, but um, uh, I, I shall hopefully have it done in a couple of weeks time, uh, and then we'll have the kits available too. So if you want to make your own Harry Styles cardigan, but you don't want to trump around looking for the yarn, then you can always come to us and get the, the, the yarn from us as a, as, as a kit. Um, I suppose if I was going to make it myself, I'm, I might, like Colin did actually, these sleeves are actually a bit shorter. I think one, two, it should have been another panel down, uh, so it would have been really long, um, but you could make it fitted or you could do one panel less. It's not too bad on me because I'm quite tall. And the same for the collar. But if you look at Harry Styles in those pictures, it is very unique. It is a, you know, it is a, I can see that point of view from a, a designer cardigan. Uh, may, may not wear it down the high street, but uh, but because, uh, you know, but it is, it, I love just wrapping myself. In it. And what is on your needles at the moment? Are you knitting away? Are you sewing away? Um, I've spent the last couple of days at the shop doing some sewing because um, I've got the space click. Sadly, I can't, still can't have um, our knitting groups and our classes at the shop cases are going back up again and uh, restrictions are coming in everywhere um, on socialising and restricting socialising. They, I don't think they'll do another lockdown again where they'll shut businesses but certainly they are clamping down on mixing with households. Uh, we're okay here at the moment but I know all around the UK some people are in restrictions where they can't mix with other households and they have to just stay at home. Um, so sadly I can't have my ladies in at the shop um, or my classes so I've got the back room still to myself doing lots of sewing and making so I've got the sewing machine out these last couple of weeks and I got making so take a look at this My job for the day is to get this and this and this into a nice simple charm pack crib quilt. So I've chosen my layout. There we are. Now I'm going to um, pile all the rows together up and then chain piece everything together. Uh, there's a good tutorial on Jordan Fabrics, good old Donna, um, to explain it. Um, and she does it far, far better than I can. Um, but basically keep your columns together and then you'll sew your rows together. So we're going to put them all up 
and then go to the sewing machine and do some chain piecing. it's all together and I haven't got to worry about losing the order because it's all there. So that was sewing the first two together and then I put the third one on and the fourth one, the fifth one, so forth. Now all I've got to do is do the rows, but I'll press my seams one way and then another way and then another way and another way and I can nest them, boom, 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 done. Hey everyone, it's day two of sewing in the back room. It's a miserable day out there, absolutely pouring down with rain. I love it when it's like that because you can then feel cosy in the shop, even though it is a bit quiet and I need the customers. But um, uh, hence the beanie as well. Um, uh, this is the uh, the brioche mioche beanie. I think I've told you about this one before. Isn't it fabulous? Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to the sewing. So I've sewn all the charms together and now I'm doing the inner border, this lovely mustardy colour to pick out the mustard there. At last, I finished. It turned out much busier today than expected. You know what, earlier on I said how, how grotty it was and rainy. Well, that pretty much pressed pause after that and I was non-stop busy. I, uh, when was that? I started recording about half past 10. I guess because Popmaster was on and it's now nearly three o'clock. But anyway, finally done. Let's have a look. Look at that. So it's a meter across by about a meter and 20 deep. So we had our charm pack. I'm very impressed with these charm packs because it tells you all the pictures you get. Six across by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. I then had a two and a half inch border, which is obviously now two. And then I thought, well, let's keep with the fives rather than a six inch border, which I know is what a lot of people will do. I did a five inch border. Uh, so now all I've got to do is to sandwich it with the, the wadding in the middle. Uh, Quiltist Dream, I think I'll use. I've got some at the back there. Um, sandwich it and then quilt it and then bind it, my favourite part. And then as a sample done. Boom, done. <laughs> Oh, that Riley Blake fabric is wonderful. Beauty and the Beast, big fan of that animated movie from Disney. So I, I couldn't resist getting that fabric in. Um, and those charm packs, oh, and what a, just a, a perfect size crib quilt that was. Um, Jordan Fabrics, um, I got a, a simple uh, pattern, free pattern from them. Uh, she's fabulous. You go to YouTube and you see all her videos. If you want pattern ideas, bit like um, Missouri Quilt uh, Company where they do um, a, uh, a YouTube tutorial each week um, but Donna uh, well they are still all independents but they're, uh, they're, they're just different styles and uh, I quite like Donna's style with her her filming and, and how she d does it and her fabulous fingernails too her painted her painted nails right now in one of the previous I think it was the last video actually I had made, it was Christmas in July, and I had made a Christmas stocking and a Christmas advent calendar. And some of you said in the discussions, oh, you wanna see a close up, wanna see a close up. I had filmed it more, but annoyingly the sound hadn't recorded, hence why it ended up just being a, a photo montage in the last episode. But I've got them here, because I thought, well, perfect cozy. Let's talk about Christmas and advent here. So here is, the Macau 
Christmas advent calendar. This one is called Let It Snow. Um, in the Let It Snow range, Santa's Workshop. And it is basically Santa's Workshop. So there you've got the, the reindeer on the roof, and then you've got the windows. And it's this idea of the elves all working in his workshop. There's number 20 there, slap bang in the middle. And then you've got Father Christmas down there. Great, so that's where the numbers go. And I don't know whether many of you have done advent calendars before, but it's a panel. And then at the bottom of the panel, so let's hold it back up again. The bottom of the panel, there are the numbers. And you just cut out all the numbers and you sew them onto their designated space. Sometimes they're single pockets, so you have to sew down the hem, fold in the sides and the bottom and sew it down. Sometimes they are twos. And you'll know, you'll know when it's a two -er because it has a dotted line and that's where you then have to do those little box pleats where you join them together. But it, it is a great panel. Yeah, hold it backwards. A lovely panel. Some panels you can tell, well, they're probably very cheap as well by the way they're drawn and you think, oh, I don't know whether I like that. But this design, British Macawa, they always do great, great advents. And here is the stocking. The stocking is from the same collection, Let It Snow. God, it's raining outside. Now I feel even more cosy in here. And there is the stocking. Father Christmas on one side, labels in the middle, and then the llama, cool llama on the other side. Now, what Macau have done with this year's stocking, which I think is a great idea, you can see that there. So there's the toe. It's quite a stubby short stocking. So to make use of this fabric, they put the cuff there. So you can take the cuff off and sew it to the top. And then it makes for a real traditional stocking. You know, when normally you have that white fluffy bit, you could use white fluff, you know, that type of um, minky fabric. You can have that at the top, but it makes for a taller stocking now, some of you are probably thinking, actually, you can get two stockings out of one, and you're right. You could just use a solid on the back and have Father Christmas on the front of one stocking and have the llama on the front of the second stocking. Because when it's hang hanging up against the fireplace, you're never going to see the back, are you? So you could get two stockings. So that's the Macawa stocking Let It Snow range. Um, as I say, they've got other other uh, collections and other Christmas advents and stockings, but that's from that range. So hope you enjoy. Now, talking about making, been very busy making. You've just seen all the other stuff um, uh, I've been making at the shop. I needed a new lampshade for our conservatory and we have the kits at the shop. And I suddenly thought, oh, some of you may not know you can do this, make your own lampshade. How many times have you been walking around B&Q or Laura Ashley or wherever, trying to find a lampshade for your living room, trying to find the, the right pattern maybe, or the right color, and you just can't do it. But how many of you have got tons of fabric in your stash and probably wonderful fabric that you love and that you've just never found the project for to use? Well, make your own lampshade with your own fabric and you, the chances are you'll, you'll have the colour as well to fit with your decor of where it's going to go. So um, I did a video of how easy it is to make your own lampshade. Take a look at this. Right, so let's open this kit and let's show you what you've got. Well, I mean, it's, it's not much at all, really, when you look at it like that. So you've got your top and your bottom according to 
how you want to do it. Your sticky back plastic, your tape, and a little bit to turn the lip under, and then your instructions. Hardly anything. And it is really easy. Oh, now I've got like a, a pizza box free as well. So you've got to work out first of all whether you're doing a, uh, a lamp that's going to hang from the ceiling or whether you're doing a lamp that's going into a standard lamp because that's how that will go. It'll attach like that, won't it? So you've got to make sure you, you choose first um, according to your way you're putting it. And then you've got to choose your fabric. This is what I'm using uh, because that will go with my conservatory. It's all sort of greens and yellowies. Uh, so let's have a look. So this is a 30 centimetre kit, 21 centimetres high. So I'm just going to cut a skinny quarter. And I'm going to cut a skinny quarter and then I'm going to press it because I need to get that crease out. And I use um, Best Press to get that crease out because you don't want that on your lampshade. So let's go and do that now. This is your sticky back plastic. <clears throat> uh, but when it's been in the kit for a long while, it can be a bit rolly. So you either need a friend, uh, this is where I need Jen, <laughs> um, but obviously we can't, because we can't be close. Um, so I'm gonna get some weight on the end there. And then you are literally sticking it to the fabric. So I'll get the camera set up on a top shot looking down so you can see that all right here's my sticky back plastic and it's going to be stuck on oh like that now i don't have to worry so much about my pattern being straight but if you had a a visual landscape there you you will obviously have to just work a bit harder to get this straight so your your landscape your your horizon line is is right whereas i've got to worry about that so i can just stick down and roll down like that so you don't worry about bubbles i've never i've done this millions of times i've never had bubbles so you're just going to peel that off like that and you're going to stick it down like that and then if i just show you the underside you're then going to pull that back and flatten as you go. Without moving it, I'm now going to stick down. There you go. That top part stuck. Just double checking I'm still okay, it's good. And then you just go up and down. And you're probably not gonna wiggle as I wiggle at the table. <laughs> right, and so there's our little flat bit. You see, and you just pull back and flatten again. going to roll up again, don't worry about that, but look, perfect, isn't it? Now one little point that I do extra that doesn't say in the instructions is these edges here. Now technically one edge does get hidden underneath but one edge will be laying on top and they say to cut up against the edge now that will leave a little bit of a raw edge and I don't like that so I just take one extra step using their tape I cut quarter of an inch and then I will then stick that down on the tape there. but all perfectly nice and tight it's already been scored so you just have to click it back and you should hear a click oh there you go and then 
you just rip it off. See? And then peel it back. Yeah, done. Now, <clears throat> do be careful of your fabric. Some fabrics will fray very easily. So you might want to just take your time with when you rip, not so much with the, but when you rip this off because of the glue on it, you might just want to be careful. Some fabrics are okay like mine. I mean, that's a doddle, look, no problems at all there. And I could probably keep peeling back and no worry. Now I've got my lampshade with the seam allowance, which will be ready to fold over when I finish, and then the sides to glue down. It's nicer, doesn't it? than having that raw. But as I say, the instructions say leave it raw. I suppose it's not noticeable because that seems at the back anyway, isn't it? In your, wherever it's gonna go. So no one's gonna see it. So stick that back down. And that's now ready to, when this comes round, what will happen? This will roll round, roll round, roll round. That's our sharp edge and then that will then get stuck down on that and then you have that lovely finish. Right, now it's time for the actual lampshade bits. They come with no glue on and that's what this is for. So stick it to the middle and then clamp, clamp, clamp. So you're clamping that round. Go all the way around, keeping it in the middle, and then pinch, and then pinch. And it sort of, if we can get it focused again, there we are. It does sort of go round. It looks a bit messy, but it, it does go. Yeah, so a little bit about the hat. So the hat um, is a pattern by Michael Shawn. Now, I've talked about him many times. I've done the Thunderhead beanie of his uh, last year. Earlier this year I did his beach babe bag which had some cool cable in it um, and now I have done this brioche. Um, two colours but not at the same time like colour work or fair isle. You, you do a round with one yarn so I had done um, a variegated yarn of knit coal and then the the color that goes up was done with the merino so you're only ever knitting with one yarn um, on a round then you change the color back to the other one then you change the color so it's a lot less faff and actually really really enjoyable uh, because uh, that's kind of like a slip stitch so it's actually really nice to do um, and I had never done brioche before, so if you've never done brioche before, it's a great pan to start your introduction to. There we are. So, both our rings are taped up and they're now ready to lie on the fabric, it's the hardest part, and roll upwards. Very hard on your own, I'll do my best. So let's take off the, the the outer layer, there we are. If you do the one with the bulb in first, if you're on your own, you can then leave that like that, ready. Don't do this one first, because then you're in a pickle. Right, as I say, this is the oh, hardest part. Place the metal on the edge of the plastic. Flat 
our nice finished seam there. So all we do now is fold over, like so. What you do want to do is just snip the fabric. Oh, wait, there we are. Just snip it there so it can fold between the bar. Fold. And you're gluing it to that double sided tape we put down. That's our join. And what we like to do with the join is cut this bottom bit off so the top bit can sit nicely on the glue. There you go. That is stuck down now, but it does look messy. We don't want all that showing. And this is where this handy little tool that comes in your kit comes in handy. Because what you now do is you go round and tuck it in under itself. Tucking any frayed edges in and you can see how much nicer that is. Let's push that in more. We've got a lot of fray bits there. Where's that all coming from? And can you see those nice, neat edges? And neat there. No stray bits, no fraying. Ready. There's my seam. How much neater is that? Because we folded it over and glued it down. I know the instructions didn't say to do that, but it, I think it's nicer. There it is. One finished lampshade. Let's go put it up in the conservatory. So what did you think? Are you all gonna go out now and, and make lampshades? But it, it really does work. Um, and it's, I think the chance of then getting the lampshade that you really want to, to fit in your room uh, is probably going to be much higher because I'm sure you've, got, you've all got, as I say, you've all got lots of lovely fabric and sometimes you'll be thinking, where am I gonna use that? Well, there you are. So uh, the chances of now getting a, a lovely lampshade to fit just right in your room of choice, I think is much higher now. So if you do make your lampshades, don't forget to tag us in, uh, hashtag the wall patch or email us your pics. We would love to see them and then we can have them in the gallery. Talking about the gallery, I had this idea because we're now in, in dark mode, uh, season two, uh, and we're all getting uh, small, more snug, staying indoors. The cold weather's coming. We're getting our our jumpers out, our our sweater weather jumpers out, our our, our knits, our knitwear, um, or our sewing wear, whatever we're making as well. Um, I know uh, many of you are, are, are really into your dressmaking and, and are making making clothes. It would be lovely if you wanted to, that is, to send us your pics of you in your sweaters, your knitwear that you're getting out ready for, for sweater weather um, and have a photo of you taken in it um, and then uh, send it to us. You can either email it to us or if you post it on Instagram, hashtag us so we can then find it. But it would be lovely to include those pictures in our gallery as well as your finished makes. 
because Oh, well, sometimes, well, it's, it's hugely inspiring, the gallery. And sometimes people go, oh, I want to do that. And I have had a couple of emails where people have said, oh, what, what actually is that? Or do you know what that was done by such and such? Um, and so let's see your jumpers because someone might then want to go, oh, I want to make that. If you know the pattern name, if you can remember the pattern name, you can also include that. And when I put the name up, I'll, I'll put the pattern up as well. Um, and it may even also help pattern designers too. If there's a pattern, uh, people can go on and, and buy that from, from Ravelry or wherever. Now, talking about knitwear, I know many of you are big fans of sock knitting. Oh, and I, we've got followers all over the world, which I love, love um, chatting to you all about that in the comments. Um, uh, and that's something I, I, I pride myself on is, is that community feel and that chat in the comments as well. And that carries on after each vlog episode has gone out. Uh, Wayne over in the Caribbean. It's a big sock knitter. You will have seen his finished socks in previous galleries. And I know uh, local knitters too. Uh, uh, Penny, who's a big shop supporter, uh, who lives just down the road, often comes in to buy her socks. And uh, Leticia as well, uh, who's done loads. Of, uh, take a look on her Instagram and look at the pictures that she draws of, of your pets. She's drawn a couple of pictures of um, my pets, Humphrey, Poppy and Damson. Um, so take a look at, uh, take, take a look at her work. It's fabulous. Anyway, to digress, but she's a big sock fan too. And is always knitting socks. Now, so the reason why I talk about that is because the West Yorkshire spinners, it's now become a tradition since 2016. They release a Christmas sock yarn. And this year, Silent Night. Ah, oh, it's got glitter, sparkle, should I say. So it's got a tiny little bit, um, what would you call it? I think you'd call it polyester, wouldn't you? 2%, yes. Because they always pride themselves on British wool, blue face Leicester, 35% um, blue face Leicester. But obviously the, the tiny little bit of polyester is for that sparkle, but look at that. That's this year's Christmas special edition. It's always a four ply and it's their signature four ply. You can get others in that signature four ply, the Country Birds collection, which we've talked about before. Um, and this one is the Christmas one for 2020, Sparkle. But they didn't just release one, they went back to Fairy Lights 2018, when Fairy Lights first came out, they've revamped it and put some twinkle in that one too. lights with the the sparkle so limited edition for 2020 now what they've also done is they've gone back to 2016 2017 2018 2019 and they've re-released them all again so you can get them all so Hollyberry. So that's very much like mistletoe, that one. And you've got candy cane. That's like classic stripes, literally is just stripes. There's no, um, cause some of these have like a fair isle effect, like the Country Birds collection, but that one is literally like a candy cane. And somewhere around Where's Robin? So it's 
robin colour, red breast, and then it's got the uh, the browns, yellow ochre, mustard, um, and a bit of grey. It is uh, wonderful. It comes with a beautiful free pattern, uh, and that's designed by Winnick Mum. I say Winnick. Uh, some people might say Winwick Mum, uh, but I think it's because it's a. Uh, well, I've just always pronounced it Winnick because that's how you do with with words from up north, isn't it? Perhaps I'm wrong, but lovely free pattern. that comes with it when you purchase called Comet. So if you're thinking of Christmas presents for people, you get that when you purchase it for free. But how good would that be as a bundle? Oh, oh no, I feel really snug in here now. <laughs> so cozy. Um, so lovely. But when you look at that, oh, mm. oh, so warm. Bed socks. Or would you want extra fluffy for bed socks? Speaking of yarn, just want to say a huge thank you to those who have spent time looking at the website at the Lavenham Blue and have bought the Lavenham Blue. I am truly humbled that many of you have taken the time to do that. Um, I have sent yarn to uh, Canada, I've sent it to America, I've sent it to the far west, to Seattle, uh, to the Five Hustle Boys, thank you so much. I've sent it to fabulous um, Kim Knitting Harvest, who's a big fan of the show. I've sent it across uh, to certain places in, in Britain, all to the wonderful um, Curly Seams girls to Tracy, um, they're good supporters. Well, this YouTube community is a very supportive community. Those two, Tracy and Emma, have got their own YouTube show, just like Fibre Hustle. They're into knitting and to sewing as well. Tracy uh, took a risk on my, can you remember me talking about the um, experimental, or what I've called the purposely variegated yarn? She bought one of them that was purposely variegated. I would have no idea how it, how it was going to knit up. I, a bit like Batik, I put resists on it and I'd got short little bands of, of white showing through and then different colours of blues and, and shades. And I saw a picture on her Instagram. Oh, blew me away. Unbelievable, it looked like Fair Isle. It was wonderful. So thanks for taking a, 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 a big punt on that, Tracy. Uh, also, uh, James, who is a big fan of the, of, the, of the vlog and has sent work into the vlog, you might have seen. Uh, he's a patch worker and a knitter and he's uh, spent time and visited the shop. Great to see you, James, and bought some lavender and blue. I, it's been wonderful, um, thrilled. It's a personal product, so I am still quite bricking it because you you want it to, well, you want it to, to work. I'm panicking that the woad's going to wear off, but I haven't heard anything yet. It shouldn't do. Woad by its nature, uh, it, it's just set, it, it, it won't. Uh, it, it may fade like your genes do, but that's the beauty of, of stuff over time, uh, your genes over time. I think they, 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 they become unique and they, 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 they adjust to you and the colours change and, and, and they often become even better when the colours change. Um, but uh, but the it shouldn't bleed at all like what I know some uh, you know, if the uh, independent dyes when they're using the acid dyes sometimes they do bleed uh, or they come off on your hands um, but this won't because it's woad and it's completely natural but if you do get blue fingers let me know if you turn into a smurf <laughs> so thank you very much thank you uh, he is to hoping that uh, we get a 2021 collection if it sells and it continues to sell, then um, obviously I will get the money back from how much it costs to get it spun and to get it dyed. Um, and we can push it further as you do and you have a 2021 collection. But we have to see. Um, as one of uh, my brilliant uh, followers said on, on the last comments of the video, take, take, a, take small steps um, to see, because you obviously don't want to put, invest a lot of money uh, for it to then flop um, and then you can't repeat. So um, 
if this continues to sell the lavender and blue then obviously i'll get money back and i can invest in and do a 2021 collection so that that would be lovely but um yeah it doesn't smell too bad <laughs> Oh, it's been great, and it really is raining here lots now, and I'm really snug and cosy. So I'm going to pour myself a drink. Oh, I think I might have a sherry too. And I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed it, the first of our dark mode. If you can send us some pictures of you in your knits over the next couple of weeks or months as we, as we continue season two, dark mode it would be great it's been great chatting to you all hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time <laughs>